Hello viewers, welcome to this video. This is the third video in the CubeSphere series. So in the previous video, we deployed CubeSphere on top of the Kubernetes cluster. And we found there was a problem with the monitoring, some of the monitoring components like Prometheus and Alert Manager, the deployments, the pods were not up and running. So we suspected it could be because we didn't give enough CPU and memory, enough resources to the virtual machine, to the Ubuntu 1804 virtual machine. Although two CPU and four gig memory was the recommended resources that the documentation says, but if you go with that, as you saw in the previous video, we were not able to bring up all the parts successfully. Hence, we were not able to see the pretty graphs in the WebSphere UI. So I tested it by giving it a bit more CPU and RAM and it worked okay. So in this video, I just wanted to show you guys how it would impact and how and what you can see and how the, the graph, the actual graph metrics and everything looks in the WebSphere UI. So if you haven't watched my previous two videos, I would suggest you to watch those videos because this is more of a follow-up video to my previous video. Okay, so I've got the same Vagrant file as before in the last two videos. If I edit the Vagrant file, so as usual, I've got a couple of uh, provider blocks, one for libvirt and one for VirtualBox. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the number of CPUs to four. My host machine here is a Dell XPS laptop. I've got eight CPUs and 16 gig of RAM. So I'm not running any other virtual machines. So I think I'm okay by giving it eight gig of memory and four CPUs. So eight gig of memory is eight one nine two. All right, so I'm not going to touch this one as I'm not going to be using the virtual box provider. So let's save that and do a vagrant up. It's gonna take about 30 seconds. I'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, so we have the virtual machine. Let's log into it using Vagrant SSH, become the root user, and do a quick check. Yep, it's Ubuntu 18.04. It's got eight gig of memory and four CPU. Got enough free space in the root file system. All right, so as usual, let's install the two dependencies, which are SoCat and Contract. Let's quickly look at the documentation. So we've been following this documentation here, all-in-one installation on Linux and version 3.3, where is it? Yeah, docs version 3.3, all-in-one installation on Linux. So I've covered all these in the last two videos, so I won't be going through all those things again. So now we are going to download the cube key. So copy that. All right, so kubekey should be in the current directory. Let's remove the tar file and move kubekey binary under user local bin. I do which kk and kubekey dash dash help all looking good. All right, so now let's proceed by running the same command we did in the last video, which is this one, copy. Based. I'm not going to specify the version of the cube sphere. If you leave that out, it's going to use the latest version. And as in the last video, we will be using 1.24.0 Kubernetes version. And Docker container runtime is not supported. I haven't installed any container runtime on my virtual machine. So I'm going to rely on kubekey to install a container runtime for us. So I need to specify a container runtime other than Docker. If you think about container runtimes other than Docker, the, the most uh, popular ones are container D, CRIO, and things like that. So let's use, so you need to pass the option minus minus container manager, and I'm going to be using container D in this example. All right, all looks good, waiting for the confirmation. Yes, and again, it's going to take like five or six minutes. Last time with four CPU, sorry, two CPU and four gig of RAM, it took about six minutes. Let's see how much, um, how long it takes this time, given we've doubled the amount of CPU and the amount of memory. So I'm gonna pause the video now and come back when it's done. All right, the command completed, and this time it took little over five minutes. Last time with two CPU and four gig of memory, it took about six minutes, and now it's just one minute reduction. So now it has to taken slightly over five minutes. But anyways, let's check if everything is okay. Let's log in to the web console. Right, username is admin, password is this one. 
right let's change our password right so here's our cluster and before we check our cluster let's see if all the pods are running fine kubectl cluster info kubectl get nodes yes one node which is ready and we're running version 1.24.0 kubernetes kubectl get pods dash a lovely and you can see all the pods are running all the deployments are looking healthy no restarts okay let's go over to the the web uh, ui right so going into the cluster already i can see some changes here last time when we visited the kubesphere web ui we couldn't see all these metrics graphs nice graphs and things so now i can see the cpu usages and the graphs for cpu memory utilization number of pods disk and everything so which means our Prometheus and Alert Managers are actually working fine. Okay, let's go to the system components. And you can see here in the monitoring, we have 10 components. All of them are healthy. Last time it was four of these components were not healthy. So if I go to the monitoring, so Prometheus, Alert Manager, Prometheus Operator, and Prometheus Gators, all of them are looking healthy. So I can go to the nodes now, cluster nodes. We have one node, if I click on that node, we can see all these stats now. Previously, we were not able to see all these uh, percentages, all these utilization graphs. Okay, so I can see some graphs here. And if I look in the pods, you can also see this graph here, the CPU utilization and the memory utilization for the individual pods. And if I go to the monitoring section here, cool graphs, CPU usage, percentage, average CPU load, memory usage, disk usage, inode usage, IOPS, disk throughput, network traffic, and all the usual things that you want to be monitoring at the node level. And you can select the time range you want to see the graphs. Okay, cool, all looking good. And if I go to monitoring and alerting cluster status, again, we can see some nice graphs here. API server request latency, API server request rate, scheduler, scheduling rate, CPU core, memory, disk, and pods. So we have 24 pods running in our cluster at the moment. One node is online. Kubesphere, Kubernetes and monitoring, all the components are looking healthy. Overview, again, nice dashboards, nice graphs. So that's all I wanted to show you in this video. It's because that, it's a shame that the documentation recommends two CPU and four gig of memory, but if you go with two CPU and four gig of memory, then you're not going to get everything like I showed in my previous video. So the Prometheus and Alert Manager pod, I don't know why it is the Prometheus and the Alert Manager part, but not anything else that's having problems launching. Maybe it requires more memory and CPU. I don't know. I haven't looked at the port specification or the deployment specification of the Prometheus and the Alert Manager ports. But if you give it more RAM, more memory, more CPU, then obviously you'll have a working Kubernetes web UI, working Kubernetes monitoring components. So this is just a, a quick way to test or explore the Kubesphere. Ideally, you wouldn't, in, in a production scenario, you wouldn't deploy Kubesphere in this way. So you'll be deploying that in a highly available fashion with more worker nodes. You'll be sharing the parts and the deployments across multiple worker nodes. But in our case, we have been using the all-in-one installation method in one single virtual machine. All right, so hopefully this has given you some information about Kubesphere to get started with and I will continue exploring additional concepts in Kubesphere and come up with more videos in the coming weeks. So until then keep learning and keep on learning. Bye bye.